Recently doing some content on how Betaflight 4.6 has added position hold and altitude hold, kind of dancing into the iNav world, begs a question, how does iNav do for freestyle? How does iNav do in Betaflight's area of freestyle and flight performance? Does iNav fly just as good as Betaflight? Well, there's only one thing we can do to find out. Let's put iNav up against Betaflight in a head-to-head -head flight performance evaluation, mano a mano. Let's see how she does. So for this testing, we could do all kinds of freestyle, but really what you need to do to push the flight controller and really check out the performance of a firmware is you got to do specific things. Basically, prop wash is usually the biggest thing that you want to see how well it can do, because that is kind of the summation of a tune, filter performance, and everything all rolled into one, how whatever can do the best on prop wash performance. And that rears its head where if you're coming out of a power loop or other cinematic moves, you're going to kind of avoid that area or envelope of where you get into prop wash. If you push it hard enough on any firmware quad, you're going to be able to experience prop wash. That's where when people are saying sometimes like, oh, I don't have prop wash on my quad. It's like, well, you're not pushing it hard enough. But if you push it hard enough, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to push it to the limit. We're going to get induced prop wash on both of the firmwares and see how, how hard we have to push it to get there. The other thing that uh, firmware struggles with is when you're doing throttle pumps, getting on and off the throttle really quick, uh, what I like to call throbbles, or when you bounce, you know, do a, a full throttle punch as there shakes. And when you get off the throttle, does it like drift around a lot? Those are really the components that you want to take a look at to evaluate a tune, to evaluate uh, firmware performance and evaluate your quad as well. So we're going to take specifically a look at those. And, you know, I published a freestyle video this last weekend. It was kind of just a little cinematic thing I did real quick. Uh, it was on iNav 8.0, the latest release. The quad wasn't tuned well, and we're going to make a future video on that, and I'll talk about that iNav 8.0 because there's some new things in there that we're going to be looking at, new filtering, things of that nature. But in this one, we're at uh, iNav 7.1.2, so just the very last release. And uh, we're putting it against Betaflight uh, 4.6. So that's actually the development release of Betaflight. So we're almost um, we're one release late on uh, iNav and one release ahead on Betaflight. So we are giving Betaflight a little bit of advantage. But uh, let's get into it. Let's see what we can see by evaluating all the details of it. And I'll pick you back up on the back side of that. All right. So in this one, we are going to just give it the beans. This is iNav 7.1.2. Do a nice power loop, bring it in. And uh, let's do some, just get right into prop wash. Let's give it hell. So I'm gonna, a little bit of shake there, but giving it as much as I can. So you can see, not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all there at all. So pretty good on prop wash. Obviously, moves are sharp. So good sharp moves, flips and rolls, as expected. Twitch moves are good too. Uh, those are really the hardest things. Oh, uh, anti gravity. You can see we got a. You can see what kind of bobble we got there. And then just zero throttle, really no drift. I'll get a little bit closer here, I'm getting pretty far out. So you can see there what that looks like. We're going up. Just a little bit of drift, not too bad. Uh, what about just full throttle crunch? Pretty smooth, right? A little bit of drift. Now it's quite windy out today. So it's fun over here but uh, yeah not bad uh, you can see let me shut this thing up not bad right can do all kinds of acro and freestyle with this thing so I just feel like iNav gets a bad break when it comes to flight performance uh, it does pretty good so let's see what we get with this guy a flight nice Nice uh, power loop there. Let's just get right into it with prop wash. 
A little bit, not too bad. Pretty good, right? Sitting down on it. Turn that off. All right, so you can see that was pretty good, right? Moves are sharp, snappy. All right, no, uh, no bounce back and just sharp stops. So it looks, looks pretty good. Uh, let's see, we can do some macro, a little freestyle. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, let's do throttle pumps. So throttle pumps, you can see pretty tight. Uh, so you can see that's how that looks. And then let's check out a, just a full throttle punch. See how smooth that is. Pretty smooth. And just getting off the throttle for drift. Really no drift there. Looks pretty good. And I don't want to run a little low on battery because I had this one out already. Just full, just letting it go. A little bit of drift on the nose. Not much, right? It's pretty good, look pretty good. So that's really the hardest moves on there. Um, what else can we do on here? Just kind of skating around. Battery's getting a little low since I had it on before. So one thing with this that might throw people off if they're not seeing the same kind of flight performance at an iNav is just the difference in between Betaflight and iNav PIDs. On this side over here, you can see the Betaflight PIDs I had from that flight. You can see my D gains there up in the 50s and uh, 60s there for pitch uh, and roll. Uh, same thing for my proportional gains, more like the 80s for those, and then the eye gains are really high. I did not specifically tune eye gains over here on iNav, but you can see the big thing there is the D gains are way, way lower. Uh, and that is the flutter point. Honestly, any higher than this, and I'll get fluttery action with uh, iNav there. So that's as high as those D gains can be. And then my proportional gains are as high as they can be to not get uh, overshooting or bounce back. And that's, you know, through looking at, uh, you know, tuning this in detail and looking at logs, stuff like that. Again, I didn't tune out the eye gains, so I could probably make these eye gains higher. That may help or should help somewhat. There was a little bit more driftiness uh, on dropping the throttle, so if these eye gains were higher, that would probably go away. I don't think the throttle pumps will go any better because uh, Betaflight has, it, it boosts the P and the I gains together. As far as I'm aware, iNav is only boosting the I gains, which is the historic anti-gravity behavior that Betaflight used to have until I brought this up a while back with Betaflight to a couple of the devs and uh, they implemented, uh, Chris Thomas, a name sounds familiar, implemented doing the P and, or P boost with the I boost. And that obviously helped with throbbles a ton um, because, it eyes way too slow eyes just for drift not that it bobbling when you punch the throttle so again i i, I nav could simply resolve that by just boosting the p gain too uh with the eye gains and then it would just be as good there as well now another thing with this that i had to do and i'll flip this over here as well so you can kind of see that in the background i'll move over in a second is the uh filters so you can see here the filter setup, and this is with going in and turning off a bunch of the filters in the COI uh, in iNav, like the anti-aerosing filter or, or the second low pass on the gyro, just turn that off together altogether. Uh, the Coleman filter or the unicorn filters, they call it uh, here it's in the CLI, it's called Coleman. Um, turning that all off altogether, uh, just having one D gain, setting this to 
um, I'm sorry, the D filter up here, setting this, that's not there either, uh, D filter right down here, setting this to a PT1 filter, not a bi-quad in CLI. So a lot of the filter settings is not exposed on the GUI here. Uh, it's in the CLI. So I had to tweak those out and adjust those. And then as you can see here, this is what I got for beta flight. Uh, and that's what I was running there for just the, the tune. So actually moving the slider down a little bit. And then uh, you can see the settings here where I move that up to 1.2. I left that there. And then uh, here what I have for my RPM filter and the dynamic notch right there. And that's just, just all the filter setting stuff. There's no like CLI hidden stuff in Betaflight. Okay, well, I might as well cover. So people were asking in the comments, if you go into the CLI, type in get LPF then that will, at least in iNav uh, 7.1.2, this will show you basically all the filter settings that you need to see. Uh, you can see some of the stuff is shown in the GUI, uh, but some is not. It's kind of kind of a pain like that. Uh, but your main low-pass filter I have is a PT1. So that's the filter that is going between the gyro of... Um, the low pass of that filter is moving between 130 hertz and 180 hertz in my setup when I have the throttle at zero up to 100% uh, throttle. So it's kind of moving up and down in between those two hertz. And again, this is in the GUI. This is not though. I think that's set to PT1 by default, but I'm not sure because iNav doesn't publish the defaults underneath here like Betaflight does. I wish it did. This is in, that's all the same. This has to do with the accelerometer. So we're ignoring that. This has to do with uh, uh, the pitot tube stuff we're not using. This is RC filter stuff. This is servo stuff. This is the low pass uh, filter for the D term, which you could see in the GUI there I had. Did change this from bi quad here to a PT2. So that is changed in here. And again, you don't see that in the GUI. Uh, Y'all low pass is zero by default. This has to do with a uh, filter for navigation mode stuff and the. Um, and the velocity uh, of the navigation PIDs for the D term, um, which actually is not active anyways, so it doesn't really matter. A little side note, but um, D boost, uh, we're not using that. This is the um, anti-gravity cutoff. We're not using that. This is the filter for the feed forward, which I didn't have feed forward on. You probably noticed that in the PID, and I just didn't want to deal with feed forward as part of the tuning. We'll have a whole separate thing on that because implementing feed forward and iNav to not get overshooting, you have to use D-Boost. So a little hint on that. And I'll make a whole separate topic on that. And then this Smith predictor, I uh, just left that go. Um, I wish I could turn it off, but I, 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 I can't. I didn't. So that's what you see in the CLI to kind of complete what the filter regime was that I had going on this. Okay, so I hope that helped. I hope that was somewhat interesting to see that iNav can... Uh, can fly pretty good. Uh, you know, you would say, well, is it better than beta flight? No, I don't think it's better. I think beta flight, really the anti-gravity thing is probably the biggest piece. Uh, feed forward is better in beta flight and the filtering uh, algorithms are better in beta flight. But if you have a queen, uh, clean quad like this one, there's barely any uh, gyro noise to begin with, then it, that doesn't matter as much. But pound for pound, uh, Betaflight has better filtering algorithms, specifically the dynamic notch, the RPM filter as well. Um, so I'm not even using the RPM filter in iNav. Um, it doesn't really, I don't think RPM filter is even in iNav 8.0. I think they might've got rid of it. But um, nevertheless, um, pound for pound, Betaflight has um, some better tools in the toolbox, like I said, for filtering, for anti-gravity, uh, for feed forward. But the PID controller is the PID controller. You can tune it, just the gains are different. Uh, make sure you're not thinking about beta flight gains. It's way lower gains for iNav. Um, and it can fly really good. You know, you can fly freestyle it. It can fly even better than some other closed source software in my experience, but I don't know, I will ignite some uh, drama down there in the comments possibly or on some discords. But nevertheless, uh, flies really good. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully you can see some settings. If you're interested in a deeper dive on that, I'm going to be reviewing the logs of these flights for uh, Patreon uh, only content. So if you're interested in that, check out the link below. I'll have uh, to that uh, when I get released uh, later on. If you're interested in some more content on iNav, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the feed forward stuff next and also going to talk about iNav 8.0 and the new filtering they have. There's a Lulu filter. Um, looks like a moving average filter to me uh, with some special funky mass that might, uh, you know, reduce basically to a, a moving average filter. Anyways, we're going to take a deeper look at it and see what she does for uh, uh, head to heads. Uh, it's not too often 
anymore that a new filter is introduced and it's in iNav 8.0. They actually got rid of the gyro low pass filter altogether. So it's a little confusing, but we'll try to peel back the onion on that and see how it works and how you'd implement it and things of that nature. Again, if you're interested in that, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like on this if you found this interesting. Thanks everybody. Hope this helps. I'll see you on the next one.